any self-respecting horror fan, and they'll tell you a universal truth known far and wide throughout the land. Remakes suck. While some would name drop 2004's Dawn of the Dead, 2013's Evil Dead, 2017's It Chapter 1, all with good reason, these are the exceptions to the rule. You need a case study in the shameless forgeries of our favorite horror classics as studios exploit nostalgia for cash grabs? Well, let me name drop two icons of my own. Consider what names like John Carpenter and Stephen King mean to fear fiction, and then take stock over how films of theirs that have been remade suck harder than Cardi B at an audition. How interesting, then, that when it comes to horror cinema's interactive relative horror games, that isn't the case. Whenever news breaks of a survival horror franchise's revival, it's warmly embraced instead of unceremoniously rejected. One thing I hope to do with this channel is to accentuate the similarities horror enjoys between its theatric depictions and immersive gameplay. For instance, it fascinates me that while fear filmmaking dates back to the 1910s and has evolved from the silent era, the red scare, and the makeup effects revolution of the 80s, horror gaming on the other hand has seen its progression condensed to a 40 year period, give or take, and has therefore advanced at a much quicker rate and in a much shorter amount of time compared to motion pictures. It is when you take this development into account that you have a greater appreciation for not only when a classic survivor horror is being renewed, but why that anticipation generally isn't there for reboots of scary films. More often than not, the gaming titles being rebooted just happen to not just be iconic scary experiences, but genre-defining pillars for console and PC gameplay. When you take into account just how much interactive media has been furthered in the last three decades, you often have that built-in fan expectation to see how developers can bring a beloved franchise into modern day using cutting-edge game development. While yes, both a film and game will naturally exploit prettier visuals to differentiate a remake from the original, let's be honest. A better looking film or game is to be expected as an enhancement, but with gaming, apart from a fresh coat of paint with HD graphics, once we pop open the hood, do we get an idea of the horsepower we're dealing with as far as an experience. Survival Horror Remakes opened the door for a franchise that was never treated to 3D environments, advanced puzzle solving, more atmospheric locations, enhanced sound design and voice acting, expanded scenes and story lore, opportunities for exploration, the advancement of memory to avoid texture pop-ins, and the overhaul of gaming mechanics from when survival horror was in its infancy to 30 years later. If you think movie and game remakes are the same for purely cosmetic reasons, imagine playing a rebooted Dead Space with tank controls and fixed camera angles. There's more to games than just their looks. Therefore, in what has proven to be a much lengthier introduction than intended, now that Resident Evil 2 Remake has paved the way for revivals of the touchstones of the genre, here is a list of survival horror games I feel are overdue for the remake treatment. These entries are listed in no particular order. We kick things off with the clear-cut no-brainer on the list. While it is imperative for any game to distinguish itself and stand out from the pack, you couldn't ask for a better calling card than the use of dinosaurs as enemy types. I foresee this as a genuinely groundbreaking endeavor if Capcom would sell the rights to a capable developer because let's be real, that studio ain't reinventing a damn thing lately. I say groundbreaking because, think about something. As much of a rehash as Jurassic World was in a lot of ways to the first film, 
Part of the reason it succeeded was the near decade and a half that mainstream audiences went without seeing an entry in that series. So, if that film could make a billion and a half because fans legitimately missed on-screen colossal reptiles, how much would gamers flock to a recognized franchise considering there has never been a solid horror dinosaur game? Now if you're asking, how is Dino Crisis beloved if you're saying there was never a solid game with a prehistoric monsters? Fair question. Yes, this IP is a familiar brand with a dedicated fan base, but even the diehards would agree that it's Resident Evil with terrible lizards in place of modern pro wrestling fans. As much as the developer attempted to distance itself from the zombie franchise, it was never able to fully thrive outside of the RE shadow. In all honesty, the series never fully tapped into its enemy variety as true horror villains. What I mean to say is that the timing is now and the opportunity is there for the taking for a revamped Dino Crisis to introduce likable characters, in signature and immersive environments against resurrected fossils that behave and hunt like no other survival horror enemy. Only then will you have delivered the first great dinosaur game. When you remember that not only has no one made a great dinosaur game to the point that not even Jurassic Park titles have been able to capitalize on their potential, Delivering on all of these fronts, like the ones that I just mentioned, wouldn't just be a home run, it'd be a slam dunk. Instead of the jump scare of immediately going for the kill, imagine being stalked by cold-blooded pack hunters in a jungle in order to capitalize on suspense. Clever girl. Rather than persistent fear of predators, visualize having unwittingly trespassed into the terrain of overly territorial herbivores. Envision a stealth mission of crossing slumbering giants where the slightest noise can trigger a stampede. This fertile ground is ripe for the harvest. To drive home what I mean, if you think about a great premise that has failed on multiple attempts only to finally get all cylinders firing, this has the potential to be the Arkham Asylum of dinosaur games in survival horror. Sound revolutionary? Admittedly, this is the most obvious choice on this list. It's also the most frustrating addition. Not just because of the multiple sequels that failed to live up to or recapture the series' magic. Not just because that Silent Hill HD collection dumpster fire failed to meet anyone's expectations. But because while many a gaming title from the 90s can call itself a genre classic, a name like Silent Hill is THE survival horror classic. It and Resident Evil stand as the dual measuring sticks of the landscape. If Resident Evil is the more marketable Dracula, then Silent Hill is the more thematic Frankenstein. You know that you're dealing with top shelf artistry when one of the game's greatest features is its soundtrack. This was always the least favored sibling compared to the more commercial Resident Evil, ditching action mechanics in favor of atmosphere and psychological terror. However, it is sad to report that while in 2021 people are celebrating the 25th year anniversary of Resident Evil, in 2022 we will have gone a full decade without a proper entry in the storied series of Silent Hill. As established IPs struggle to trudge ahead and keep their series fresh, I am a strong advocate of consolidation. Meaning, as far as previous entries in a franchise, preserve what worked, dispense what failed, improve what faltered. Let me explain. As far as Silent Hill is concerned, don't simply disregard previous sequels outright just because they didn't stick the landing as I feel there is plenty of potential left to mine. Examples include 
Shattered Memories, providing players psych evaluations whose answers actually impact gameplay. Picture searching an apartment and the game picking up on your wandering eye, fixating on a supermodel's curvaceous poster, and then the game models a sexual atrocity for you to face as an enemy. The premise of Homecoming is that of an army soldier returning from a tour of duty. Bearing in mind that the town of Silent Hill forges living nightmares out of your inner demons, can you imagine the acid trip in store that a war veteran's scarred psyche can project into an interactive Dante's Inferno? I mean, if Rob Zombie could sample some of that LSD, he might end up a good director. Or well-groomed. My point don't lose gameplay innovations that worked. Don't dismiss sequels with prospects for missing the mark. A wise developer would capitalize on these nuances while implementing several of their own. Silent Hill can unquestionably regain, retain, and surpass its glory days once more. It need only learn from its failings while concurrently recognizing its victories. The survival genre can absolutely take up residence once more in that foggy little town where horror calls home. It genuinely warms my cold dead heart that I have seen many an article and YouTuber giving this dark horse some shine as a prime candidate for the remake treatment. If Silent Hill is the distant cousin of Resident Evil, Parasite Eve is the latter's younger sibling. The original game posits the interesting premise of both hero and villain bearing similar powers, where the main adversary, Eve, is a creature manifested from evolved mitochondria. Those are the batteries that your body's cells run on if you ever took high school biology. Science sure has come a long way ever since it invented magic. Her ability to manipulate the mitochondria of organisms ranges from causing spontaneous combustions to transforming others into hideous parodies of life forms. Since the hero too can manifest her abilities, Aya generates energy-based powers allowing for offensive alternatives to gunfire to add to the weapon variety. Given this styles clash in how hero and villain use their similar powers, the enemy's desire to build a better race after humanity's genocide, and the hero's immunity to the adversary's powers, on paper, this reads like an X-Men face-off within a survival horror game. From this perspective, it is interesting to think of your main characters at odds, embroiled in a genetic arms race. The RPG elements and customization of the game are what help to further differentiate it from its brethren horror games. The sheer number of mutations as your genes are rewritten causing a riot in your DNA is enough creative license to spawn wild and fearsome abominations that can make for distinctive enemy types. The mind's eye staggers at the David Cronenberg-esque body horror that can be belched forward of bodies in active rebellion. Because these are mutations, they're not constricted to a single monster type, like undead cannibals or killer penguins or something. They can take on whatever shape, size, or abilities at any given moment. When you factor in that horror is predicated on the fear of the unknown, each threat that you encounter is never the same. You know you struck pay dirt when this level of monster unpredictability reaches the heights of John Carpenter's The Thing. What more should we expect from the cinematic RPG? Ah, forefather, how we have forsaken thee. Let's cut right to the quick. No big studio would ever acknowledge or appreciate and thus invest in the lineage owed to this horror series, regardless. The indelible mark left on such games as the Amnesia series, Call of Cthulhu, and yes, even Resident Evil can trace their inspiration back to this survival horror progenitor. As much as sequels can depreciate a franchise's luster, 
It was in the more recent entries, in this series during the 21st century, that this game's reputation really took a pummeling. The New Nightmare. The 2008 remake. Illumination. All did nothing to reinvigorate this enterprise, and instead sunk it to new lows. Playing as a detective in the recent Call of Cthulhu remake reminded me not only of the more investigative aspects of Alone in the Dark, but how a contemporary iteration could salvage this classic game's former splendor. For such an influential experience, considered a breakthrough upon release, to have fallen by the wayside is a blemish on the genre. Sadly, nowadays the only time this iconic game is ever mentioned is in passing, relegated to a relic of the past instead of a worthy contributor to the present and near future. This series has been shunned harder than childhood cartoon characters. Speaking of the future, this famed game is a title in most need of a refresher, if only for posterity's sake. Looking towards the past, this interactive experience was one of the fledgling games to introduce such institutions as puzzle solving, pre-rendered backgrounds, limited speed, health and ammo, exploration, inventory management, investigation to solve the plot's mystery, all of which became the mainstays that define survival horror. Even the dreaded tank controls and fixed camera angles, though obsolete by today's standards, did influence the genre in its infancy and added to Alone in the Dark's legacy as the first 3D survival horror game. If anyone were to look at Let's Plays or videos of the original's gameplay, they might balk at the dated and admittedly cartoonish looking art style. However, I would caution this would not disqualify the possibility for a remake. Given that modern story conventions and gameplay standards have evolved so profoundly in the near 30 years since this game's release, a reimagining that takes advantage of contemporary appreciation for atmosphere, mood, and tension would only serve to show how much genre norms have changed. One need only look at how the original RE remake represented such a quantum leap from the original, or how what was considered scary in Resident Evil 2 was revamped to chilling effect in RE2 Remake. Translating the original Alone in the Dark's contributions to suit current day horror tropes would only accentuate its impact on survival horror, not diminish it. While Doom 2016 and RE2 Remake give me hope for the future, Glorified reboots like Halloween H40 could never entice me to want to see more of those films, whether sequels of those franchises or similar films riding its bandwagon. What the resurgence of the classic games offers versus how the exploitive reboots detract from iconic films is the difference between reinvigorating aging greats and aging like vinegar. I have long compared Resident Evil to the first Halloween movie as the story that combined the prevalent tropes that went on to define their respective genres. Ironic that 2018 closed with a repetitive ripoff with Halloween and 2019 opened with the actual remake with Resident Evil 2. Despite both inaugural entries of these franchises representing the amalgam for slasher movies and survival horror, both take divergent paths in direction and thus arrive in opposite destinations. Halloween postulated itself as a sequel when one look at it just goes to show that it recycled the iconic moments of the original, and the few contributions it adds are frankly disposable anyway. RE2 on the other hand was lauded as everything a remake should be. Resident Evil 2 Remake actually added something to its lore without exploiting its name brand. It definitely wasn't trying to pass itself off as one thing just to be something else. If this comparison weren't apt enough, Doom Eternal launched a month after the Invisible Man Remake. My point is, I'm looking forward to reboots of survival horror pillars of yesteryear. Meanwhile, 
I don't give a damn about the Blumhouse version of the Dark Universe or Friday the 13th Part 13, any universal classic or slasher, sequel, prequel, shared universe. Fingers crossed that the on-the-way System Shock remake delivers while the the in-the-work System Shock 3 brings the goods. There is no nowhere to hide. I see everything you do 